Well, we're going to have to zoom out a little bit on this one. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. Today is the first video, the intro, for my next build, the Monogram 148 scale B-17G for the Chatterbox Attack Bomber Aircraft Group Build. First things first, um, I'm going to put a link in the end screen of this video for the Chatterbox Attack Bomber Aircraft Group Build. Uh, if you'd like to see more about it and perhaps join up So look for that at the end of the video and click on the link if you decide you might want to join in Next um, I want to say a big thanks to Jim at, over at uh, Shutter Ace my partner in crime on this uh, group build that we've organized uh, for sending me this kit He sent it to me along with a few other kits and uh, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to build this giant B-17. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this kit. According to Scalemates, uh, this kit was first kitted in 1975. It has been pretty much available since then in one form or another. Uh, most of the, chain, the changes uh, that Scalemates lists generally has to do with box art stuff like that um as far as i know the marking options have always stayed the same uh there could be different ones but i i didn't delve too deeply into it because it has you know has a bit of a lineage but uh mainly whenever there were changes any new parts uh as scalemates calls it uh any new parts changes were not to the actual base kit itself for example uh, there was a release that says new parts but what it was it was the addition of a p51b by monogram so it was kind of like two kits in one box uh, the only other new part change was the port side fuselage <clears throat> uh, was a came in clear it was called the visible b17 i believe and the whole port side left side was clear plastic so you could see the quite detailed interior and i say quite detailed because uh there is a lot of detail on the inside of this kit um even considering the uh, time frame in which it was manufactured originally so it's kind of nice, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So let's talk about the box and uh, the actual, then we'll get to the actual contents. So the box itself, as you can see, is uh, quite giant. Very sturdy box, which you'll see when I take the lid off. But it measures 14 by 18, I believe. And um, this had quite a presence on the hobby shop shelves as a kid. I remember seeing this one as a kid and always wanting to build one. And I never did actually get around to building one till the mid 90s, mid late 90s. Uh, my wife bought one for me and I was able to build it. And I had it for quite a while till it got uh, messed up in a move. Um, so it's about time I rebuilt it and, you know, did it more modern justice, I guess we could say. The artwork on top, uh, pretty much par for the time period from Monogram. Nice painting done by someone named Loker, L-O-C-H-E-R. I'm sure somebody out there knows who this person is. Uh, but uh, really nice artwork, and it was one of those things that, you know, sitting on the shelf, it's like, again, as I say, it, it was quite eye-catching. And um, something that was uh, really kind of a desirable kit. And that's one of the things that was nice about these this time period is they really did a good job on the artwork. Uh, you got two planes, you've got, you know, the nice background of the countryside below, and then smoke, I'm assuming. It's either clouds or smoke from uh, a bombing run, but uh, just really nice looking box art. Having to do a little handhold with the uh, camera here because the box is so big. So on this side, we have uh, an actual photo of the finished model. Uh, same on both ends. <laughs> on the 
what would be the bottom in relation to the artwork on the on the box top we've got some nice illustrations here of the actual finished kit and then uh, another couple of photos here this one actually comes with this bomb trailer and some crew figures so that's kind of nice so right out of the box you could do a nice little scene if you wanted to and then uh, the second photo there with the red background you have a uh, nice shot of the interior of the bomb uh, bombardier station and the um, pilot and co-pilot cockpit area then another illustration that shows all the figures another photos or more photos here uh, another of the aircraft itself from the outside and then the uh, waste gunners position and then another shot of the detailed cockpit area and then the old barcode and all that kind of stuff on the other side of the box you have some information basic information on the aircraft historical information then at the bottom the monogram models incorporated Morton go Morton Grove Illinois copyright 1975 this is a first boxing of this kit by the way this is what it looked like when it first came out then another nice photo showing the 19 3 16 inches long 25 and 15 16 inch wingspan kit includes five flight crew and ground crew figures parts for a detailed bomb cart complete with bombs and a four page full color fold folder telling how to build a diorama and we'll get to that later and then the name of the aircraft again all right so with that let's pop the top off this kit and take a look at the contents Whoops. so as you can see we've got uh, quite the sturdy heavy duty cardboard box going on here corrugated cardboard it's all doubled up on the edges and it is quite sturdy so as you can see this kit's been around since 75 and uh, it is the box is in perfect shape this cardboard thing here helps keep the top from sagging too much a little bit there but uh, it's just really nice really nice way to pack it this part comes out and then you have the actual contents so I'm gonna get this box off of the desk uh, well, let me do this so you can see what's going on here. We got a lot of flipping plastic, but not many parts. So let me change up the um, the camera, get a little bit closer, and uh, we'll take a look. First up is the instructions. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can see, it's a booklet type deal here photograph of the aircraft on the front of the actual model kit built up um, inside read this before you begin it just gives you assembly and you know what types of cement to use and all that kind of stuff some warnings and then the actual steps themselves now one thing to note on these instructions compared to uh, newer more modern stuff is you don't get all of the written um, instructions anymore uh, back when this was built <clears throat> or when this uh, kit was manufactured uh, obviously the primary market was the US so you know everything's in English there's plenty of stuff to read now you know as time progress uh, things become more international and it has to uh, work for a broader audience where English is not the primary language so you just get illustrations but <clears throat> uh, that's just kind of nice it's very nostalgic for me because this is the way instructions were when I was a kid but anyway you got all the uh, instructions and then um, it tells what color to paint stuff but not with color numbers with the actual color so like this bulkhead right here olive drab hose and box basic bulkhead color chromate green zinc chromate pipe uh, just you know no paint numbers paint manufacturer numbers anything like that it just tells you what color to paint it 
Um, and then that's the way it is throughout. Just more on through the assembly process for all of these parts, sub assemblies, and so on. And then you get to the last two pages, which are the two marking options that are um, available in this kit. So the two options that come with the kit are El Lobo 2, which is a metal finish aircraft with like this blue stripe on the on the tail, and then Chowhound, which is the uh, olive drab upper gray lower. Now. I apparently during the run of B-17Gs, they were coming off the production line at first, uh, painted in the camo colors. And then as time progressed, they just eliminated paint altogether to save on weight, save on cost, and to speed up the uh, production, get them where they needed to go. Um, so that's the two options that are available. And then on the back, we've got information about the real aircraft, uh, information about the decals, painting, and the figures. And then right here, you have a numerical code listed below indicates correct monogram humbrol color selections that you will need to detail your kit. These paints are specially formulated for application to plastic surfaces and are available at your hobby, favorite hobby retailer. So you've got 53 gunmetal, 126 neutral gray, etc. And then it has these small photographs of the completed models, or the completed model in its two markings. You got El Lobo 2 um, in the metal finish, and then you have Chowhound, uh, which is the gray upper and or gray lower and uh, olive drab upper. And then it also gives you the information on what, what unit it belonged to, you know, what squadron, group, and what base they flew out of in England. <clears throat> so that is the instruction booklet. So let's move on and start looking at some of the plastic. First sprue. Okay, this one, well, real quick, like uh, <clears throat> these older kits. They don't come with like a letter designation for a particular sprue. Just all the parts are numbered and the part numbering is weird. For example, you have uh, this little part here, number 46, right next to it is 207. So just kind of weird. I don't know how they come up with this, but they do. And some of the parts themselves are actually numbered. Just a little bit of a tidbit there for you. So anyway, this sprue is black. Um, it's the only black sprue out of the four or five sprues that are in this kit. <clears throat> um, a lot of simplified things, but just because it's simplified doesn't mean it's not uh, adequately detailed. <clears throat> Case in point, these cockpit sides and the instrument panel. Now, as you can see on these cockpit sides, hopefully you can see, there is a lot of detail going on here. Lots of gauges, switches. I mean, some of the details are so small, it's, it'd be really hard to paint them. However, it looks really good. And keep in mind, this is 1975 technology. <clears throat> so parts details really good. Uh, the machine guns, these are the machine guns here for the, uh, like the nose, the waist, and probably, yeah, and for the uh, radio operator's position, which would be the gun sticking out of the top of the um, uh, fuselage. <clears throat> now, they're kind of sunk in the receiver part, but considering they're gonna be behind glass, somewhat distorted glass, uh, I'm not gonna worry about filling that stuff in. I was considering using aftermarket guns and barrels, <clears throat> or at least barrels, but I'm having a hard time finding what I want, and uh, I just, I don't think it's really gonna be necessary. I wanna keep this as much out of the box as possible, with a couple of exceptions. But anyway, <clears throat> the detail's pretty good. Um, one thing to note, any of the wooden surfaces, like the plywood floor sections, or these uh, ammunition bins, and these other parts that are made out of wood uh, on these aircraft, there is molded in 
uh, wood grain detail. So painted a base color, put a brown wash over it, wipe it off, and it'll have a nice simulated wood grain look. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. Then we have the other machine gun positions. Uh, this, I believe, is for the ball turret. This is for the upper turret. This is for the tail. This right here is the control for the uh, the chin turret. Um, you know what? That may be the chin turret, but I'm not sure. The chin turret guns, possibly. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, because this is the this is the tail guns here. I'm sorry, tail guns, um, ball turret, top turret, and chin turret. But anyway, this is it. There's a little bit of flash here and there, but you know, again, considering this is 1975 technology, it's not too bad. And a little bit around the uh, steering uh, yokes there, but seats have nice detail they have these cushions or or uh whatever they are on the back of the seats with molded in uh harnesses and seat belts so it looks pretty good i think it'll be fine but that is the first sprue all right here's the next sprue and there are two sprues uh pretty close to being identical um it's the upper and lower wings and the uh, upper and lower um horizontal stabilizers slash elevators uh, a couple of bulkheads the um, framework for the seats uh, one of them is broke but it was in the box so that'll be easy to fix a few of the parts fell off um, like there's some bomb parts that have fallen off some propellers stuff like the propellers were on the uh, black sprue but everything's there it's no big deal uh, that happened on these older kits sometimes because sometimes the uh, the sprue gates were like super 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 small, so sometimes they didn't like like this one. It just became detached. But anyway, no big deal. <clears throat> so a uh, quick note on the uh, detail of these wings. Uh, the whole kit actually, it's raised uh, detail raised panel lines and such with the exception of obviously you know along the uh, ailerons uh, the uh, flaps um, so for a lot of people that's kind of a bummer but I build plenty of kits with raised panel line detail it's easy to deal with and uh, it doesn't look bad on the finished product and there are some I've seen some say that it's probably more accurate to have raised panel line detail on some aircraft than others now whether or not i agree with that i don't know but it does kind of make sense especially since the uh especially on the fuselage on these b-17s the uh, panels overlapped they weren't butted up against each other they overlapped and were riveted together or however they did it but it doesn't matter <clears throat> there's nice uh, texture detail on the fabric surfaces fabric control surfaces there is some uh, copyright little mold right here that I'll have to scrape off and sand. No big deal. Uh, detail on these um, bulkheads is really nice. And uh, the superchargers are molded in, which is different than most uh, newer um, kits. But again, it's no big deal uh, once they're painted and a wash applied in these... Uh, grooves around the detail it'll look fine and it's on the bottom anyway so it doesn't really matter but all the details really nice um, we'll see how it all goes together should be fine but that is the second sprue and pretty much the third sprue the only difference being is uh, it's got different uh, bulkheads and it also has the main landing gear struts and we have the big guy this is the fuselage um, halves here and then a lot of the uh, interior, more of the interior detail. And um, got the engines, cowlings, all the figures, which are actually really nicely molded. Especially since this is a first, uh, I guess would be considered a first run since it's, the, uh, it's an actual kit from 75. These figures look really good. 
they do have some seam lines along the edges, but um, it should be easy to clean up. And I may or may not use the figures, or I may use them in the uh, in the future for a little setup. I don't know. But we got the parts for the, uh, this is the bed section for the bomb cart. The uh, wheels forward are on the black, um, the black sprue. Then you have the uh, cockpit, uh, the pilot and co-pilot area, and then the bombardier station here. So, again, uh, not really that much to talk about as far as flash or anything. It's actually in really good shape. A little bit of flash on the edges of the uh, cow flaps here. But, you know, very easily, very easily dealt with. Now there will be some sanding and smoothing of the seam lines um, where the two fuselage halves come together, but nothing that I haven't done before. So looks pretty good, but that is a ginormous bit of uh, plastic. Now let's look on the inside real quick before I put this away. <clears throat> a lot more detail molded on the inside of the bombardiers area. You know, you've got oxygen lines. Uh, controls and then what's nice is there's a lot of ribbing and stuff in here now I've seen some reviews where people like oh, look at all these ejector pin marks they are horrible <sighs> yeah they're horrible let's say yes they're horrible but they're inside of, a, of an aircraft that you've got tiny openings to see inside so is it really that big of a deal you know I mean, it's got to happen somewhere because they got to punch these parts out of the molds. But, you know, I don't know. That's just, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I mean, now if you got it on surface detail where, it, you know, it does make a difference, yeah, that's annoying. But when you put it on the inside, yes, this is detailed and it's whatever. It's not that big a deal to clean that up. But ultimately, again, in the end, it's going to be closed up and you're not really going to see it. Now, where it would matter, more is on the one I mentioned earlier where the uh, port side is clear and you're going to see on the inside. Well, yeah, then that would be a bummer. But again, that's the way technology was then. That's the way they did it. And, you know, you, you just have to work around it. So anyway, just a little rant for myself there. But all these areas have, you know, you got the, the detail in where the, uh, the gunner, the tail gunner is. It's just It was a really big deal for this time period to have that much detail on the inside. That's pretty much what it boils down to. So anyway, that's what it looks like in there. It'll look really good. I'm going to take lots of photos of this as I go along, plus my video, because um, I kind of have an idea how I want to start displaying my models with additional information on the actual build process, but I'll do that in another video sometime. But anyway, that is the giant and last of the colored plastic sprues. Then for the last bit of plastic, which comes kindly wrapped in bubble wrap, um, we have all the clear parts here, uh, the waste windows, which has uh, the framework around it. So I'll have to blend that in with the, uh, with the fuselage. Um, the ball turret, all the other sort of windows, the nose, top turret, and uh, I have not been able to find a mask set for this thing, so I'm afraid I might have to manufacture my own, but we shall see. But the parts, you know, they're typical of the time frame. You know, it's like there's there's some distortion going on, but that's just the way it was back in those olden days of yore. But uh, it'll be all right. We can work through it. Nice thing is, though, the nose is not one of them greenhouse jobs. Just one solid piece with just like a little bit of a framework there. So that's kind of cool. But anyway, that is the clear plastic. All right, one more thing I want to talk about <clears throat> is this right here. Now, this one wasn't actually in the box, but one very like it would have been in the box. Now, Jim and his ultimate wisdom and smartness decided to keep it because uh, these things are hard to come by. But no big deal because I had mine 
from the kit I built in the 90s. What these are are uh, tips on building dioramas by Shepard Payne. And they were just uh, kind of a, a pamphlet kind of thing that came with um, mid to late 70s, even into the early 80s, monogram kits. Uh, aircraft, armor, stuff like that. Where Shep shows how to further enhance your model. To put it in a scene that tells a story or shows it in its natural or intended environment. So in this case, we have a crashed uh, B-17 here. And these things were really awesome. They're really sought after by collectors nowadays. Um, and I still have uh, a few of them, quite a few of them from whenever I was building back in the 70s. Because uh, Monogram was probably my favorite kit manufacturer back then. But they're full of information you know, on how to plan a diorama, uh, weathering, uh, vehicles and aircraft, building the dioramas, extra equipment, minor conversions, converting and painting figures, final assembly, and then it would have, you know, all of the body of the text was the same on all of the dioramas because these are just general um, hints and tips. Uh, but each one would have photos and captions specific to each kit. Then on the back, you would have this upper section would be specific to this particular kit, how he did the battle damage, how he super detailed certain parts, how he detailed the inside, um, how he, you know, did the, the base work, the groundwork on the base, and then some simple instructions on how to do it and then, you know, a final photo. But these things were really cool. It was something I really, really looked forward to whenever I bought a monogram kit because I just, looking, I mean, I never did these things as a kid as far as dioramas. I just, I looked at it as something that was just way beyond my capabilities. And I still don't do dioramas, maybe someday, but I just really like the idea of these. And the fact they were in full color, um, most of them were in full color, just really gave you an idea of what was possible with a model kit other than just building it out of the box. So anyway, that's something that if you get one of these kits, hopefully it'll still be in the box uh, because they are really interesting and they're fun to read. And especially if you, you know, dealt with these as a kid, it sure gives you a wave of nostalgia, I tell you. So anyway, that is uh, the other part that comes normally in the box. All right, as far as uh, supplies and stuff like that, I'll be using a mixture of different paints, uh, MRP, SMS, uh, Temia probably, Vallejo for the hand brushing. Um, haven't decided which uh, silver or aluminum color I'm gonna use on the, on, the, uh, on the aircraft yet. I have to figure out, I have to decide which one I wanna use. Um, but I have a mixture of Tamiya and uh, SMS paints for that. Uh, I'll be using Tamiya Extra Thin for my cement and probably some uh, at times I'll be using Model Master Liquid Cement, which is a little bit thicker. For the glass, I will most likely use uh, Tester's Clear Part Cement. Um, for decals, which you probably noticed are not uh, talked about here, um, I, I think I took them out of the box and put them away safely and forgot where I put them because I'm not actually going to be using those markings. Uh, but uh, I'll be using uh, Tester's decal set and uh, Walter's Solva set, maybe Mark Fit, I don't know, just whatever I need in order to do it. So uh, that's pretty much it for the kit and the products I'm gonna use for it. As for the video series itself, um, it's going to be kind of a hybrid of a step-by-step -step and then um, like a summary type video like I've been doing recently. Uh, it's going to be a prolonged build. The group build is for six months, so I'm not going to be in any kind of hurry to get this thing finished. I'm going to take my time on it, set it aside from time to time to work on other projects. and. Uh, so it's not gonna be, you know, like a week, weekly release kind of thing. But um, I will be doing periodic videos on it. 
and I will talk about the things I'm doing, the methods I'm using, um, anything to look out for, that kind of thing, which is pretty much par for the course for my uh, for my video series. But uh, that's the plan. Now, as far as markings, um, I will discuss those at a later date when it becomes pertinent. But we'll just keep that under wraps for now. So, yeah, that's it. All right, I think that's a good place to end this video. Part one of the Monogram 148 scale B-17G for the Chatterbox Attack Bomber Aircraft Group Build. So... If you have any experience with this kit or have any other hints tips concerns anything you want to talk about put them in the comment section down below and if you want to follow the series of this uh, particular build maybe hit the subscribe button and uh, follow along see what's going on from time to time as I said earlier I'll put a link at the end of this video and uh, if you think you might want to join in on this group, group build, we'd love to have more participants. So if you're interested, hit that link. Follow, the, uh, follow that to the video that Jim and I did um, about the group build and what it entails. So, all that said, as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by Regular Dude. And I will see you all later.